Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zalov's chess channel and welcome to the round 2 of the FIDE chess.com Grand Swiss tournament in 2019 in the Isle of Man. So the, in my previous uh, game that I've published I've covered a really really nice uh, game played by Ivan Ceparinov so today I'm going to continue to show you uh, what is in my opinion the game of the day, uh, the best tactical game or the best uh, with some great sacrifices and it's a game played by this very very strong from Grandmaster for Poland, uh, Kasper Pirun against uh, Anna Zatonski. So, uh, Pirun Kasper, uh, he's really a great tactician because he won uh, five times the, the world championship in uh, solving chess puzzles. So, it's also a very nice accomplishment. On the other hand, Anna Zatonski um, uh, was four times uh, US ch chess championship. So, it's also, I think, a very, very um, important thing to mention here so we have really uh, great players in this tournament we have european champions uh, former european champions world champions former world champions so it's unbelievable how many players are here and that's why i think it will be one of the best uh, best chess tournaments in 2019 so let's see uh, this beauty played by casper uh, piron here with the black white pieces uh, we have knight on f3 and here uh, d5 by uh, anna zatonsky uh, the e3 this is now a little bit calm setup i like it uh, it's uh, sort of uh, reversed uh, Nimtso Indian setup with knight on f3 and then e6 we can try something like b6 and uh, then play into this Bogo Indian or the Nimtso Indian setup so knight on f6 was played and now c4 uh, the transposes ba basically also sort of in a reversed uh, Benoni style and after e6 we have knight on c3 by Casper uh, Pierre uh, we have bishop on e7 and now b3 you see it it's a really, really sort of a Nimtso Indian setup now, uh, but from White's perspective, and now we will have a very nice diagonal for the bishop, and of, of course, this uh, bishop will be then placed on a very active square on e2 or even on d3. But first, we have to play the move d4. So b6 was played. Um, Anna Zatonsky is also uh, playing on this uh, Fianchetto style. Bishop on b2 was played, and now bishop on b7. So in this top grandmaster, um, uh, it uh, it's now the same position like in, in in a game in 2018 played by Wesley So against uh, Bakrot Etienne. Here Wesley So won in this particular uh, opening line, and here we have the exchange variation uh, here immediately in the center, which is sometimes a good good uh, good thing to simply release the pressure a little bit in the center because uh, white. Um, Pardon me, Black has uh, developed his light square bishop, and that's why we want to block it out after this move e takes d5. Now, this uh, uh, bishop is much more powerful, but here uh, Kasper Piron also plays the move d4, and we have now really, really static position. The main idea in this static setup, so it means that these pawns uh, are really blocking each other out. Uh, the main idea from white and for black here is to cement uh, some pieces on the supported squares. From the black's perspective, of course, uh, we want to cement our knight maybe here, here on e4 because it's supported uh, by this d5 pawn uh, from white's perspective we would love to cement our knight on e5 so uh, in the continuation casting was played bishop on d3 and now uh, now a6 because we want to play something like c5 maybe in, in the continuation of the game and then we're not allowing some knight on b5 uh, annoying threat so that's why here white also castled and now bishop on d6 this is now on the improvement of the position of the bishop which is a good idea uh, here by black uh, this bishop wasn't uh, good here on e7 now the bishop has a better uh, activity and now you see we have also this c7 supported so now our main idea from black's perspective as i mentioned is to cement our knight here on on, on e4 so in the continuation uh pure and casper simply played uh, rook on c1 uh of course getting use of this semi-open file but now after knight on b uh, to d7 uh here it was a really really interesting idea that uh, the polish grandmaster played here he played rook on c2 and um, you see the importance of this move through the whole game now uh 
it seems uh, that it's a little bit loose you lose the connection between your rooks on the on the first rank uh, on the first rank but uh, this uh, rook will be very important because it will change the direction of the attack here on the second rank we can then uh, really play it on the e file d file we can play it on the c file but the idea of white is is here to play queen on the, uh, a1 and really support this uh, square e5 because as i mentioned in this static center setups we want to occupy uh, here the squares that are supported by this pawn on d4 so that's why this was really, really an interesting idea here played uh, played by Casper Pure. so rook on e equals played you see now queen on a1 with the idea to support now um, uh, this uh, this e5 and here knight on e4 as I mentioned this is our the main ideas of the static setups and here knight on e2 uh, played by white and now queen on e7 you see uh, white is getting out of this attack by the knight and now uh, white also played on his idea to simply play this uh, outpost of the knight on e5 the knight takes on e5 uh, doesn't bring you so much immediately it seems that you can uh, get a pawn but it's really not true because after bishop uh, d takes e5 bishop takes on e5 bishop takes queen takes queen takes rook takes on e5 but now we have a very very nice positional trades of pieces we can play bishop takes on e4 after uh, d takes e4 now we can take first the pawn on c7 and after potential bishop on d5 we can cement our knight here on d4 so great great preparation here by uh, by white you see this knight will never uh, be kicked away from this particular square it's very well placed it's centralized now our main idea is to simply double up the rooks on the uh, on the c file and i think white is uh, really really better here so after knight on e5 uh, rook from a to c equals played and now f3 kicking away the knight we are not allowing uh, this knight to stay very long on this very very annoying square on e4 knight on f6 was played and now bishop on f5 uh, this is now a pinning idea by um, by white it's also a common idea in the queen's gambit the client when the rook comes here on the c file then to pin this knight on d7 with the with the move uh, f5 and maybe here a better idea uh, would have been to play maybe something like g6 uh, for uh, for black after bishop on h3 simply to push the pawn on c5 because uh, uh, as we said we are n we don't like the, really this outpost so that's why the c5 would be sort of indirectly attacking this uh this knight on e5 after a potential rook from f to c1 we can simply take after e takes d4 rook takes on c2 rook takes on c2 but now finally uh, knight takes on e5 after uh, d takes e5 bishop takes bishop takes queen takes queen takes uh, queen takes and now king on f2 okay again uh white can cement the knight here on d4 although black is up a pawn but the activity of white's pieces is simply better than black so uh, it's a good compensation for this uh, pawn so but it's an equal game i think here um, black should have gone here in this continuation with the move g6 and then as i said simply to push c5 this would be a really liberating liberating line for black instead of that uh, rook from uh, c2 d8 was played and now Casper um, Piron gets his uh, attacking chances he plays of course f4 is cementing the knight on e5 even more now this knight is very, very fixed here and here uh, knight on uh, knight on b8 was played and now knight on g3 bishop on c8 uh, this is also sort of a, a try of whites to go into positional trades of pieces because you see this bishop was really really blocked out through the whole game by its own pawn and this bishop is very active so this positional trade of pieces idea is a good idea by um, by by black but of course uh casper peon is not not interested in these scenarios he plays uh, simply bishop on d3 knight on g4 was played and here rook on e2 and um, here again uh, black has some counterplays uh, black can take even here the advantage in the game here bishop takes on e5 
is the best continuation for Black. Uh, uh, Anna uh, Zatonski didn't play that. Uh, you see, after Bishop on e5, uh, if you take with the d pawn, it's really dangerous because after Queen on h4, you have to play something like h3, and we can simply take, take, and here the Bishop takes. Uh, black uh, will be a pawn up, and uh, this Bishop is still blocked out by its own pawn. It, there are possibilities to simply continue to push the pawn here on f5, but I think it's defendable basically uh, white would be forced to recapture with the f1 but again with the same idea queen on h4 again h3 has to be played queen takes uh, h takes g4 bishop takes and now queen on e1 and uh, this leads now into a simplified position um, white is a pawn down so i think this is perfectly playable uh, for black although white has also the bishop pair instead of that uh, after rook on e2 Queen on h4 was played immediately, and now knight on f3, Casper uh, Pierre uh, uses this now this moment to kick away the queen. We have queen on h6, and now uh, queen on e1, um, supporting this e3 pawn, and now knight on c6. h3, knight on f6, and now again, finally, uh, knight on e5. You see, this uh, idea of this knight outpost stays through the whole game it's really a simple idea when we have this as i said static center setups we want to support this knight by the pawn on d4 now it's even more supported with the pawn f uh, on f4 and this um, knight on b8 but not knight on c uh, c6 idea is i think a little bit too slow uh, too slow for black to challenge now this knight and here Casper uh, Piron after knight on e7 he uses now this moment to create a very very nice attacking formation with the pieces you see these pieces of whites are really compact but they are also aiming uh, really really dangerously here against the queen we have a very powerful battery on the e file the rook is on the f file uh, the knight Although it's a little bit uh, weird on this g3 square, but at least it prevents some knight on f5 outposts, which could be really dangerous. So, so very, very nice attacking formation and in continuation, g6 was played by, uh, by black. And now uh, comes also a very, very interesting idea here. Casper uh, Piron played the move e4. And uh, after d takes e4, it seems that white has to take here and then after trades of uh, uh, pieces okay so white is still continuing uh, the game with this very nice outpost of the knight but here uh, white didn't take the pawn uh, on e4 here uh, the polish grandmaster played very nice move bishop on c4 of course uh, this is now a very important move because um, we get now a very very nice activity with this bishop and of course also the main idea is to simply continue to push the pawn on f5 creating a discovered attack by the bishop on the queen so here after uh, d takes e4 first bishop on c4 rook on f8 you see the rook doesn't have good squares anymore and now finally f5 queen on g7 had to be played uh, now f takes g6 h takes g6 and now comes a very very nice rook sacrifice rook takes on f6 queen takes on f6 and now knight on e4 now finally we're taking the spawn with the fork on the, on the queen and the bishop but the bishop is not important any anyway in this position it's a, anyway blocked out by this uh, knight on e5 here queen on g7 was played and now bishop on g5 uh, again you would love to play the move f6 here kick kick away the uh, the knight but it's not possible because of this very nice activity of this light for bishop rook from f2 e8 was played and now bishop on f7 uh, with the check king on h8 queen on h4 and now queen on h7 but not a problem here uh, queen on f6 and it was a very very nice checkmate here by uh pierre and casper so Great, great game, great attacking formation, but uh, Black had uh, here some uh, counterplay possibilities, uh, didn't use uh, this particular moments in the game and got punished because of that here, uh, when the position, when the dynamics of the game changed, uh, Kasper Piron found really, really nice attacking, attacking possibilities and that's why I think this is the game uh, of this round. Uh, you can also suggest me uh some more games if you want to uh to see them here on my youtube chess channel i'll pub try to publish them if you have some suggestions which is really the best game so far so uh, i'm really looking forward as i said because we'll see also 
uh, which game will be the uh, the game of the tournament it would be i think a very very uh, nice a nice competition because we have many games that ended in even after 25 or 30 moves and uh, these players are really showing us a great great attacking chess in this very nice tournament okay um, i hope you enjoyed this game meanwhile you can watch my other commented chess games and you can also watch my best chess games of all time series in which i show you all of the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and you can also watch my co uh, commented chess games played by computers in which i show you some lila c0 stockfish and many many of these computer engines uh, chess games and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course